So you're, you know how engineering, there are stages of product development, and you have to go through one design phase, then the next design phase, then the next design phase. It's like Musa salam's life was being engineered by Allah, and every part of the design, every one of those experiences was part of the design, so you could be ready for your real mission. And in this is a really beautiful lesson that the experiences that we go through, they are part of Allah's design to, to help engineer us. Because we are like the human beings are like, like a baby's like raw materials. Right? It's like raw materials. And as Allah puts us through these experiences, actually each one of those experiences starts building our understanding, builds our maturity, builds our experience. Sometimes you develop strength by going through pain. Right? Like for, this is just Allah's design. You know, athletes, for example, if they want to improve themselves, they have to push harder than their previous stamina to improve. Right? And that's how they're being engineered to perform even better and better and better. So Allah says to him, وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي So you can be crafted, engineered even, under my watch. And I want you to remember this phrase, crafted under my watch. Now, I told you the connection, there's some sort of a connection between Musa alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam. And I told you about the mountain and the sea in the story of Musa alayhi salam and the mountain and the sea in the story of Nuh alayhi salam. Then I told you that Musa alayhi salam, say, Allah says to him, you will be craft, you were, you're so you could be crafted under my watch. And then you find a similar phrase in the story of Nuh alayhi salam. When you look at the story of Nuh alayhi salam and he, Allah told him to build this ship, which was a strange instruction because there was no water anywhere nearby. Why am I building a ship? And nobody even knows how to build a ship. Nobody, because they don't, they're not a people that live next to the sea, so they have no reason to know how to build a ship. So Allah gives him wahi and he says, Nuh alayhi salam is being told, engineer this ship under my watch. And so this phrase is similar between these two stories also. Now, what, let's focus on Nuh salam for a couple of moments. When he was being told to engineer the ship, then everyone around him who already, they already called him crazy. They already insulted him for many generations. In fact, some of the things we learn in the Quran, the hints that we get is that People used to disbelieve in Nuh salam, and then they would get married. Young men disbelieved in him, young men and women. They got married, they have children. They bring their children and say, don't listen to this crazy old man. And then the, those children get older, they get married, they have children. They bring their children and say, my dad told me, don't listen to this crazy old man. So generations and generations used to insult Nuh alayhi salam. But now, after 950 years, Allah is telling him, build a ship. And they're looking at him building a ship, and this is the... We told you he's crazy. This is, see? This is the craziest thing he's ever done. Right? So, one of the, the, the big allegations against Nuh alayhi salam is that he is insane. By the way, that same accusation was made against Musa alayhi salam also. He was called insane also. But anyway, so he's building this, this, this ark, this ship, under the watch of Allah. But while he is building it, the more he builds it, the more people make fun of him. Every day he's working on it. You cannot build the ship in one day. You cannot engineer it in one day. You're working on it, working on it, working on it. And Allah is, is it's almost as if, you know, when you, when you design something, when you, especially construction project, engineering project, and we know it's big enough that it's going to fit human beings, it's also going to fit animals. So it's a very large construction project, right? So you have to have blueprints, and you have to have a schematic, so you can put the right pieces in the right place, and you have to have structural engineering even. All of this has to be taken care of. Allah says, وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ وَالدُّسُورِ In another place He says, we made, we boarded them, boarded him onto something made up of boards of wood, planks of wood, and nails. It's as if every board of wood and every nail was designed by Allah, put this here, put this here, put this here. So everybody else is calling him crazy, but he's working according to the design Allah has revealed to him. You know, and he's, he's designing this ship. 
Now, why did I mention both of these things to you? Now I, I slowly work towards the point that I wanted to share with you in this khutbah. There's a really beautiful surah in the Quran that I came here to, uh, to not only study, but share some lessons from uh, with a, a group of uh, our students, uh, Surah Al-Tur. He swears by a number of things. The first thing he swears by is the mountain. And the last thing he swears by is the sea. So the first thing was the mountain and the last thing was the sea. And it's very subtle and delicate that at the end of this surah, Allah talked to His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah talked to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And He said to him, وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Keep moving forward with patience, stay strong on your mission, because you are commanded by, the, by your Rabb, because of the hukum of your Rabb, stay, keep working forward, because you are definitely under our eyes. The same phrase that I told you was used in the story of Musa salam. The same phrase that was to used in the story of Nuh salam is a similar phrase that now Allah is using for Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's using it in Surah Al-Tur, in the beginning of which he made a hint towards the mountain and he made a hint towards the sea. No, but what does it mean for our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? It actually, it's kind of a combination of both of those stories and then even more. In the sense that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is going to go through many, many experiences while he is in Mecca. And every one of those experiences is part of what Allah wants him to go through, not just for him, but actually the, 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 the lessons for all of the ummah until judgment day are being designed by the experiences that our Prophet is going through, sallallahu alayhi wa If we contemplate that for a little bit, that's a very powerful lesson. What is that lesson? Every surah of the Qur'an, that we recite so beautifully, our Qur'an memorize them and we enjoy them reciting them in the prayer. When those surahs were given to the Prophet wasallam, when he would recite them, people would call him crazy. People would insult him. And he had to go through those experiences so that a, a thousand and a half years later, you and I can recite those same surahs. You understand? So he, Allah put him through that because actually he had to go through that so one day we can value what we're reciting. So one of the things that every Muslim, myself and yourself should be aware of is the words of Allah that we get to recite, they're not cheap. It was a big sacrifice that had to be made and the Rasul ﷺ was being crafted and his mission was being designed by Allah with a lot of pain so that one day we can have the convenience of having access to the word of Allah. Because it did not come to us in an easy way. It came through us to, through the sacrifices of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those that believed in him. The other thing is that in both of those stories, especially in the story of Nuh Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal told Nuh Alaihi Wasallam to build this ship. But why was he telling him to build the ship? Because the adab of Allah is very close. So two things are getting closer. Two things are increasing. One, the time they have left and the state of emergency is increasing. Two, the way they make fun of him is also increasing. And as the Prophet ﷺ was making his da'wah and he was sharing the Qur'an with the people of Mecca, their aggressiveness towards him was also increasing. And the more their aggressiveness was increasing, the time for hijrah was also coming closer and closer. The time to leave Mecca was coming closer and closer. When he has to leave Mecca, the moment he will leave Mecca, the, the, the new chapter will begin. And that new chapter is not just the life in Medina, it's the chapter of adab, punishment for the people of Mecca. And the first episode of that punishment was Badr. The second episode was Uhud, and so on and so forth, right? The punishment, will, the, the, the phase of da'wah is over, now Allah's punishments will begin for them. Nuh alayhi salam has to build the ark, and soon after that, the punishment of Allah will come. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi is being told, you stay on your mission, we're watching. We're watching. فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا But there's a subtle difference. There's a really interesting small difference. And there's a beautiful connection also between the building of the ark and what the Prophet ﷺ was given when Allah says, فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا 
Nuh السلام, was told to build the ark الفلكة, It also suggested that we will watch over every single nail Every single piece of wood We will control every part of this design And Rasulullah is being told وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Stay committed to your mission, no matter what people are saying to you, no matter how much they call you crazy, whatever insults they give you. Keep moving forward, don't back down, because every step you take is being designed by us. Every single step you take is being designed by us. So don't think these people have control. Don't think these people can cause any failure. They cannot cause anything. You just keep doing what you're doing. Your mission is this. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. So it's almost like when Rasul Sallallahu is thinking about the work that he's doing, he can't help but make the connection between what Nuh Alayhi Salaam was doing as he was building the ark. But the problem with that was, the more you build the ark, the closer you get towards the punishment. The closer you, the, the people of Nuh are getting towards punishment. And the more Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is giving da'wah, the closer his people are getting towards the punishment. Things are about to change. Things are about to change. And so beautifully, what Allah does in this, in, in this surah, He tells the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to make tasbih. He, he tells him, it seems like it's unrelated. وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ uh, فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْهُ وَإِدْبَارُ النُّجُومُ As you get to the end of the surah, the Prophet ﷺ is being told, keep doing tasbih of Allah until idbaru nujum Meaning, do tasbih of Allah in the night time also, until the stars begin to disappear. Meaning, fajr time. And this is a very important image. Because the image of doing tasbih of Allah in the night is actually like his mission. He is calling to Allah, describing the perfection of Allah, sharing the word of Allah, and around him is the darkness of kufr, darkness of shirk, like the darkness of the night. And soon that situation is about to change. There's going to be a new morning that's coming. A new light is going to emerge out of Medina. A new situation is going to arise. And to prepare for that mentally, the Prophet ﷺ is being told, declare Allah's perfection until the coming of the morning. Till the, the disappearance of the stars, meaning there's new light that's coming. Right? So in it, there's a subtle hint that things are about to change until the hukum of Allah comes. Until then, you keep doing this. Wasbir li hukmi rabbika. Until then, you keep working. But soon, I will give you a new hukum a new rule, and that rule will be to make hijrah, and you'll have to go.